How's it going, people? I was just having a few beers and thought I'd share with you. Ah. I've had this for a little while. Why Christianity solving life's most important question? I thought you solved problems and answered questions, but anyway, this is Ray Comfort we're talking about. What happens after we die? Besides decomposition, I guess. Is there a heaven? If there is, how good do we have to be to go there? What about the happy hunting ground? I'm pretty partial to that. I'm a little bit Native American, a tiny bit. I'd rather go there. Um, or are we reincarnated? Born again, reincarnated. It's all the denial of our mortality. Mortality is only temporary. <laughs> Just like life. Which religion should we choose, if any? This booklet will help you to make the right choice. And it's from Ray Comfort, so you know it's unbiased. <laughs> it's good news for Hindus, Muslims, Jews, Buddhists, Catholics, Protestants, Atheists, Agnostics, Jehovah's Witnesses, they put them with us, Mormons, Scientologists, Gnostics, Satanists, good news for the Satanists even, Secular Humanists, and New Agers. Hmm. Well, I mean, let's see. That cover, covers a lot of it, yeah. And all the other nutty, religious-hearted bullshit. <sighs> it's all good news. <laughs> Please take the time to read it carefully. Okay. There's nothing more important than where you will spend eternity. Ray Comfort. Is that his real name, I wonder? Is... A best-selling author, author of more than 60 books. He also co-hosts an award-winning television program with actor Kurt Cameron, Banana Boy and Crocoduck. <laughs> oh, the choice. Imagine I offered you a gift Imagine I offered you a choice of four gifts. A choice of those, though. You don't get them all four. The original Mona Lisa. The keys to a brand new Lamborghini. A million dollars in cash. A parachute or what's behind curtain number three. Oh, wait, don't pay any attention to the man behind the curtain. Um, you can pick only one. Which one would you choose before you decide? Here's some information that will help you to make the wisest choice. You have to jump 10,000 feet out of an airplane. Does that help you to connect the dots? It should because you need the parachute. It's the only one of the four gifts that will help you with your dilemma. The others may have some value, but they are useless when it comes to facing the law of gravity in a 10,000 foot fall. Uh, the knowledge that you will have to jump should produce a healthy fear in you. And we all know fear is healthy. Um, and that kind of fear is good because it can save your life. Remember that. Okay. <coughs> uh, now, think of the four major religions, if I must. Hinduism, Buddhism, Islam, Christianity. He saved the best for last, didn't he? Uh, which one should you choose? Before you decide, 
Here's some information that will help you determine which one is the wisest choice. All of humanity stands on the edge of eternity. Because, you know, once you're born, you're going to be around forever. But, you know, you just have to decide what neighborhood you'll be in. I mean, life is temporary. The afterlife is forever. Yeah, because we're so fucking important. We are all going to die. We will all have to pass through the door of death, which is a way of saying the same thing you just said. Uh, it could happen to us in 20 years or in six minutes, or any combination thereof, or in six months, or today, or this minute. I hope not. Stick around. Um, for most of humanity, death is a huge and terrifying plummet into the unknown. So what should we do? Are you scared, Ray? <laughs> do you remember how it was, uh, how it was your knowledge of the jump that produced that healthy fear? And that helped you to make the right choice. He's such a fear monger, huh? He doesn't just peddle snake oil. He peddles fear. You know what the law of gravity can do to you. Yeah, the same thing death can do. <laughs> if you're lucky. Otherwise, you just really messed up and you get to hang around. <clears throat> Oh, yeah. In the same way, we are going to look at another law and hopefully your knowledge of what it can do to you will help you to make the right choice about life's greatest, greatest issue. So stay with me and remember to let fear work for you. Because it's working for Ray. Your fear is paying him dividends. Tax-free. The leap. After we die, we have to face what is called the law of sin and death. And there's a footnote. Uh, see Romans 8.2. So run along. Check out Romans 3. 8.2. Uh, okay, you done? All right. We know that law... As the Ten Commandments, I thought Jesus came to fulfill the law, and it doesn't count anymore. Yeah, I mean, you can eat shellfish and pork, and but the parts that count are the parts you want to count. <laughs> all right. It's all about selective reading, you know, cherry-picking, jumping around. You need to let Ray be your guide. Uh, so let's look at that law and see how you will do when you face it on Judgment Day. Have you loved God above all else? No, but I hate Darth Vader. So, I mean, I do have feelings about some fictional characters. And I have the hots for Scarlet O'Hara. So, but... Love God, I mean, I don't know. I need a visual to go with that. <sighs> okay. Is he first in your life? He should be. Which God? Uh, the Divine Brahma? You didn't clarify all that other religion shit to us. I mean, you talk about the four religions and then you jump right into the Bible. Why aren't we looking at the Mahabharata right now and the Quran? Yeah, it seems like Ray's already made up his mind. All right. He's given you your life and everything that is dear to you. Do you love him with all of your heart, soul, mind, and strength? And anything else that applies. 
that's the requirement of the first commandment. Or have you broken the second commandment by making a God in your mind that you're comfortable with? Yeah, ask Ray Comfort if you're comfortable with the, law, the God he's made up in his mind. Everybody makes up God in their mind. And they read the Bible and get something different. Because they all jump around. Where you say, my God is a loving and merciful God. But not capitalized. Who would never send anyone to hell. That God does not exist. Oh, so suddenly Ray's an, an agnostic here. 99% agnostic. He's a figment of your imagination. Wow. Talk about... Here's a shiny mirror, Ray. <laughs> to create a God in your mind, your own image of God, is something the Bible calls idolatry. Idolaters will not enter heaven. I'm sorry to hear that, Ray. Guess I'll be seeing you in hell. Have you ever used God's name in vain as a cuss word to express disgust? That's called blasphemy which is uh, a victimless crime. Uh, and it's very serious in God's sight. This is breaking the third commandment. I'm doing pretty good, you know, three for three so far. And the Bible says God will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. God damn! Jesus Christ. What a hater. Have you always honored your parents implicitly? I, I'm pretty fond of my folks. I guess I fucked that one up. <sighs> I think pretty highly of my parents. Uh, and kept the Sabbath holy. Which, which day of the week is that again? First or the seventh? <laughs> Didn't Jesus say that uh, the S Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath? He did, didn't seem to think much of it. Um, if not, you have broken the fourth and fifth commandments. It's funny how Ray goes back to the Old Testament whenever he wants to. Uh, have you ever hated someone? The Bible says, whoever hates his brother is a murderer. I don't have a brother. I have three stepbrothers, and I, but I, I kind of like them. You know got a brother-in-law. Um, I like him too, though. Um, oh, I fucked that up. I don't have a brother to hate. Damn it. Uh, I'm not big on hating. I think it's an awful lot of wasted energy. All right. The seventh is thou shalt not commit adultery. But Jesus says, Whosoever looks at a woman to lust after her has committed adultery with her in his heart. The seventh commandment includes sex before marriage. All right, I, I'm, I'm back on track. I've done that one. Yeah. I've also looked and lusted. So I'm guilty of thought crimes. I should have worn a rubber when I was looking at a sexy lady. <sighs> have you ever looked with lust or had sex outside of marriage? I just said I have. Just not lately. I need to get back get back with that, you know. Get with the program. Um, if you have, you violated that commandment. Thanks, Ray. I already know the Ten Commandments. I thought he was going to tell me something new, some good news. He talked to me about all these other religions, but instead he went right to the Holy Bible, the Old Testament, too. Little Jessica is the title of this chapter. So that 
is God's moral law that we each will face. Raised uh, reading selectively from the Bible. Kind of forgetting his New Testament. Um, we will be without excuse when we stand before God because he gave us our conscience to know right from wrong. Each time we lie, steal, commit adultery, murder, and so on, we know that it is wrong. I hope so. <sighs> Some people, I don't know. So, here is the crucial question. On Judgment Day, when God judges you, will you be found innocent or guilty of breaking this law, all those commandments? Before you answer, will you go to heaven or hell? The Bible warns that all murderers, idolaters, liars, thieves, fornicators, and adulterers, I thought they were the same thing, uh, will end up in hell. How does this have anything to do with these other religions that he sort of forgot about? All right, let's get back to little um, Jessica. Perhaps the thought of going to hell doesn't scare you. <sighs> because you don't believe in it. That's like standing in the open door of a plane 10,000 feet off the ground and saying, I don't believe that there will be any consequences if I jump without a parachute. No, it isn't. It's totally different. Ah. Ah, totally different. To say that there will be no consequences for breaking God's law to say that God is unjust. He's not. He just doesn't exist. Um, that he is evil. No. Um, nothing evil about drowning the whole planet, you know, and including unborn babies, puppies, kittens, <laughs> and saving eight people on board a, a boat <laughs> with a, a seed to uh, repopulating all the species. Because he had a tiff. He had a little temper tantrum. It's not evil. Then again, like I said, you know, I hate Darth Vader. I hate... I, actually, I don't. You need a good bad guy in every story. All right. Um, so, um, this is why on February 24th, 2005, a nine-year-old girl was reported missing from her home in Homo Asa, Florida. Three weeks later, police discovered that she had been kidnapped, brutally raped, and then buried alive. You're so nice, Ray. Little Jessica Lumford had been found tied up in a kneeling position, clutching a stuffed toy. Wow. That's the last paragraph of that little section was all he gave for Jessica. All right, let's see how he ties this all together. How do you react? How do you feel towards the man who murdered that helpless little girl in such an unspeakable, cruel way? He was probably went to confession later on and Jesus forgave him. And he's going to heaven now. Are you angered? I hope so. I'm mostly disgusted. Um, of course, I was already disgusted when I started reading this. Um, I hope you are outraged. If you were completely indifferent to her fate, it would reveal something horrible about your character. Boy, raised is so manipulative, isn't he? Do you think that God is indifferent to such acts of evil? Let's see. Did he intervene? Mm, nope. Nope, nope, nope. He just watches everything and lets it happen. If he exists at all. And I don't think he does. Um, if he did, he'd be evil. A sadist. Um, 
You can bet your precious soul he will, is not. He is outraged by them because Ray knows what God's thinking. You know, because, you know, if you talk to God, you're religious. But if God talks back to you, you're Ray Comfort. <sighs> the fury of Almighty God against evil is evidence of his goodness. Just take Ray's word on that. If he wasn't angered, he wouldn't be good. He isn't anything. How do you know how he reacted? Did he tell you? We cannot separate God's goodness from his anger. Again, if God is good by nature, he must be unspeakably angry at wickedness. But he's got to let it happen because, you know, it's his will. But his goodness is so great that his anger isn't confined to the evils of rape and murder. Nothing is hidden from his pure and holy eyes. He is outraged by torture, terrorism, abortion, theft, lying, adultery, fornication, pedophilia, homosexuality, and blasphemy, in that order. But he doesn't mind snake oil salesmen and con artists like Ray. Um, he also sees our thought life. And he will judge us for our hidden sin, for the hidden sins of the heart, for lust, hatred, rebellion, Greed, unclean imaginations, ingratitude, selfishness, jealousy, pride, evil, deceit, etc. <sighs> thought crimes, thought, thought sins. Jesus warned, but I say to you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. Emphasis added. Yeah, this isn't about thought control. <laughs> Obey authority. And pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. Uh, the Bible says that God's wrath abides on each of us. And that every time we sin, we are storing up wrath. That will be revealed on Judgment Day. We are even told that we are by nature the children of wrath. Emphasis added. Sinning against God comes naturally to us. We naturally earn his anger by our sins and I'll pick that up with um, um, instant death because uh, this is running on and he hasn't made his point yet but that's fascinating and I hope it's changed your life and I'll pick it up in the next video where I left off let me know if that changed your life or saved your soul or some shit like that Peace the fuck out. Have a wonderful, whatever the fuck it is you're having.